So I'm going to show you briefly what it's like to be an interpreter on Zoom. So um, just so that you get a feel for what it's actually like to be in the booth. Um, as you can see, I'm in a nice, nice, cozy booth here by the beach. Well, it's, uh, it's just the background that I've put up here. So first of all, the, what you want to do is to change your name. So um, at the moment, you can see the name is Joe Burbage, uh, but we don't want that because otherwise the other meeting participants will assume that I am a delegate, that I am speaking on behalf of someone. But no, I have to make it clear that I'm an interpreter. So I go to um, rename here. So you go to, uh, at the bottom, you have to click on participants um, here, manage uh, participants. And then, um, then you'll see the names of the different people appear. So you click on your own name, more, and then you choose rename. And then it's best if you maybe put your first name and then interpreter and then the language that you're going to be interpreting. So maybe Espanol or English or French or whatever. So um, let's say Espanol. Uh, no, or interpreter one I'll do for now. Um, okay, so now I've got this is the start of the call before the interpreters have been assigned. So at the moment, people have just put their names up, but uh, nobody has been assigned to a booth yet. Everybody is just on the floor all together. On the, it's as if you're in, all three of us now are in the meeting room so we can all listen to each other. We're all in the same room, as it were. Nobody is in an interpreting booth yet. So now I'm going to, as the host, I'm going, to, or, well, the host will put you into a booth. They have to assign you to a booth. So then they're going to click on interpretation, add interpreter. And so let's do interpreter one. We'll make interpreter one um, the an interpreter for English, Spanish both ways. And then interpreter two, we'll make also an interpreter for Spanish. So um, uh, you as interpreters, you won't be able to see this function. It's just the host that does this. So start interpretation. So now, those two interpreters are in the booth, and it's only me who is on the floor. The, I'm the only one in the meeting room, and the others, the interpreters, interpreter one and interpreter two, are in the booth. Um, and so the interpreters in the booth, the only thing they hear are the people on the floor. So they only hear me on the floor, or any other participants who may join in a few minutes who are on the meeting floor. The sad thing is, I, I don't understand why Zoom have done this, but um, interpreters cannot listen to other interpreters. Interpreters can only listen to the floor. So that means that you will have to find a way of um, listening to your other colleague if you like. So you could, for example, uh, you could take your mobile phone um, and you can open Skype on your phone or on a tablet or another computer, and then you can listen to your colleague you can have a communication uh, a call open on skype which is just for you and your colleague to use so that you can listen to the other colleague you have who's in the same booth as you so here interpreter one and interpreter two they cannot hear each other on the on the zoom call but um they can connect to each other via skype or some other platform so that they can hear each other on that uh, on the Skype call. They can listen to the interpretation of the other person. And that way, interpreter one can say, um, uh, and now uh, after, uh, and now we'll move on to the next speaker and I will hand the interpretation over to interpreter two. And then um, interpreter one mutes the mic and interpreter two takes over. Um, okay. But there are many different ways that the interpreters could agree to do this. There's not one solution that suits everybody. Um, so, for example, you can just send text messages over WhatsApp. So interpreter one says, after this speaker, I'm going to hand the interpretation over to you. So you take over after, when, as soon as this speaker finishes speaking. And then interpreter one mutes the mic when that speaker finishes. And interpreter two opens his or her mic. Now I've just been assigned as an interpreter and so I can see uh, English Spanish so I click OK and then as soon as I click OK now I am in the booth and I see my two outgoing channels here English Spanish okay so the only thing I can listen to now that I'm in the booth is the floor I cannot listen 
to any other interpreters, okay? Um, and so then you click, uh, so if I hear English being spoken on the floor, then I am going to interpret from English into Spanish. So then I click on the Spanish button here. And then as soon as I hear a Spanish speaker on the floor, I'm going to click on the English button here, okay? So um, now I'm going out in English, and now my output language is Spanish, okay? Because I'm working with those two languages. And here, now I can show you a brief uh, view of what it looks like to be a meeting participant. So the meeting participants, can they have a button at the bottom of their screen. It's like a globe with the word interpretation below. They click on that and that brings up a menu of all of the different languages available for interpretation. So let's look at that video now. And because you have to do 14 days of quarantine, strict quarantine, not lockdown. 14 days in quarantine, 14 days in quarantine, strict, not simply. And voilà, the measures that have been put in place. In several days, weeks, there are the measures that are being taken. I'm returning with a bottle special from Londres. De Londres a Roma en un vuelo de Italia, prácticamente vacío. Um, and I've done my first week of quarantine, so only 